Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen and I want to welcome you to another edition of my follow-up success videos for people that are suffering with peripheral neuropathy. If you're watching this video, then that means that you've requested for more information. You've either watched my full-length video or you're starting to watch my follow-up sequences for, for uh, videos on how we can help you with your neuropathy problem. Today I want to talk to you about healthy nerves and the requirement for not having inflammation. So we talked about the nerves are dying off because they're not getting proper fuel in the way of glucose and oxygen. Today I want to talk to you about your nerves are dying off because they're chronically inflamed. Inflammation for in the Latin derivative it means to ignite. So imagine I have a blowtorch here and I blowtorch the mic, I blowtorch the TV or I blowtorch the radio or your iPhone or whatever it may be. How well is that phone or TV or, or electrical device going to work if we put a blowtorch to it? Not very well. So the same thing happens to our body. So if your nerves are dying off, if you have numbness, tingling, radiating pain, pins and needles, electrical-like problems in your hands or your feet, your nerves are inflamed. That's the bottom line. And like we talked about last week or last time is we have functional ranges and lab ranges. And sometimes we're told that our lab tests are normal even though we still have these peripheral neuropathy problems. And we talked about the fact that they're not necessarily healthy. They may not be sicker than the average person that took the test last year. But because we looked at it from such a broad range, we missed all the people that were getting C's and D's and they were still eliciting symptoms, yet they didn't need to be on the medication just yet because it wasn't too far gone. However, inflammation, there's a lot of markers that we can see on a blood test that I'll be honest with you, when I have patients come in and I evaluate them for their peripheral neuropathy problems, I don't see these markers ever done on their test. Why is that? Because the doctor didn't order them. So a lot of the times uric acid, we can see these are inflammatory markers that we can evaluate from a healthy range again because every single lab test that you do has a healthy range and a functional range. And one of the things I do for all my peripheral neuropathy startup patients is we look at your lab test from the healthy range and say, hey, Mr. Jones, you have a problem with inflammation here. You have an absorption problem here. You have potentially too low blood sugar and that can cause insulin resistance too. Your white blood cells may be elevated. So you get the point. I basically look through all your blood work and say, you have these and these are contributing to your, to your neuropathy problem. And the patient kind of looks dumbfounded and said, well, my doctor never told me that I had any of those problems. So what, I'm, what we're doing is we're using functional medicine and we're looking at these trends and we're looking at the physiology and the biochemistry of the body and see how it's working. C-reactive protein, we like to look at that. I see that more often than not. Um, the sedimentation rate, that's a very general range for a general test to see if we're inflamed. Homocysteine, oh my goodness, I'm going to be showing you a bunch of videos on homocysteine, but typically if your homocysteine is really high or even if it's really low, that's going to point to a lot of genetic things that are going on in your body that we need to address nutritionally. But suffice to say, if your homocysteine levels are elevated, then you're inflamed, and we need to address those components as well. And then there's acute phase reactants. Those are other markers on your test like iron, ferritin, globulin, uh, uh, insulin. There's a lot of different things that we look at and, and, and may be missed in terms of your doctor never tested them, number one. Your doctor didn't even tell you that you, if they did test them, that you were functionally high even though you weren't laboratory high. And those are all signs of inflammation. So when we put together a peripheral neuropathy program, part of our program is to reduce your inflammation. And in order to know if we're reducing your inflammation, we need to look at all your blood tests from a functional scale. So hopefully this made sense to you and I look forward to helping you in your recovery with your neuropathy problem. Give my office a call, 561. 883-0090. Thank you so much.